So welcome back to part two of how many of our videos this series ends up being, where we delete the DOD or AFM system for my 2014 Silverado. In today's video, we're gonna go over all the parts that I picked out for this job um, and why I picked the ones I did. So in the first part of this video series, we went over how much power my truck currently makes stock. And if you guys wanna check that video out, you can do so at the link above. In today's video, we're gonna go through all of these parts in detail to explain why we selected the ones we did. And we will have links to all of these down below in the description of this video, along with some more detailed specifications and part numbers. Now, all the parts that you see in front of me are not necessary if you're simply looking to delete the DOD or AFM system from your truck. However, I do have a higher mileage truck and it's out of the powertrain warranty. So if anything fails at this point, it's on me. So I wanna make sure that the parts in there are gonna last for quite a while. Um, also, while I'm in there, I might as well get a little bit extra power since I'm already taking a lot of these parts off. Most of the parts that you see in front of you, I got from GPI or Guatney Performance Innovations. They were fantastic in the process of picking this kit out for my truck. I had um, very specific needs. I didn't want to, hurt, want to hurt the towing capability of my truck. I was mostly going for longevity of the vehicle um, while making it uh, robust and getting a little more power out of it. A great example of their customer service, again, not paid for any of this, um, just a good personal experience. A part was missing when I laid all this out. I called them and they're overnighting that part to me tomorrow um, because I'm trying to get the truck done this weekend. I need it uh, back together. So awesome customer service that they're willing to overnight that at no cost to me. All the parts for the AFM Delete are from GPI. Some of the parts I picked up off of eBay, I picked up a used intake manifold and throttle body off of the 6.2. And then the Air Raid intake is actually a part that we sell. And if you guys are interested in getting that, we will have a link to that in the description. We're gonna have links to all these parts. Most are, as I said, are gonna be for GPI. If you're strictly looking to delete AFM um, and not do any other upgrades while you're in there, you can do it for as little as a thousand bucks. Keep in mind that does not include any of the tuning costs. That's gonna be a few hundred dollars extra. Um, if you have access to HP tuners, you'll just need to pick up a couple credits for your vehicle. I believe it's only two credits. We're gonna confirm that when we do the tuning a little bit later on and we'll go through all of that in detail. Now GPI does offer a tuning kit for 350 bucks. That is what I opted to go with. I had access to HP tuners, so I just had to pick up those credits for my vehicle. They're gonna do all the tuning remotely. I sent them my stock tune over. They're gonna send me a tune and then we are gonna do some data runs and logs and send that back and get that tune refined. But again, that's all gonna be covered in a future video in this series. And once that's done, we'll link it above. Now, as I said, if you want to delete AFM for just the components, you're looking around a thousand bucks. For everything I have here, now keep in mind, some of this was coming off eBay. Some of this I got at a little bit less of a price because we're dealers for the product. Um, this is all looking around 3,700 bucks, give or take. There is a thousand dollar core charge for the ported heads. So that brings it up to about $4,700, give or take. Um, however, you are getting refunded for that amount. GPI was kind enough to uh, cover my return shipping. So thank you guys for doing that. Now, the most important part of deleting your AFM system is replacing the camshaft as well as the hydraulic lifters. Now, if you're purely looking to delete AFM, you only need to replace eight of your hydraulic lifters. However, given the age, or not the age so much, but the mileage on my truck, I decided to replace all 16 of the hydraulic lifters. Now, as I may have mentioned earlier, depending on how we edit this video, I'm trying to not hurt the towing of my vehicle. And when you go to more aggressive cams in a vehicle, it shifts that torque curve. And obviously when you're towing, you want a torque at lower RPM so you can get your trailer, whatever you're pulling off the line. So I decided to go with a stage one cam so that it didn't really shift the torque curve too much. It does give you a little bit more power, but if you're looking for more performance, you're probably gonna to wanna to go to a stage two or three. Definitely talk to GPI about that, do your research. But if you do tow with your vehicle, you wanna be careful of not going too aggressive with your cam. You're also gonna to wanna to replace the lifter trays. I have four new lifter trays to go in. You're gonna to wanna to get the AC Delco RTV sealant that's gonna go on your oil pan and timing cover. I also went with the upgraded hardened push rods. Again, given the mileage on my truck, it's a good idea to change these out while I'm in there already. And these are gonna definitely last a lot longer. You're also gonna need new head gaskets since you do have to pull off your heads. And since I was pulling off my heads, I decided, hey, why not go ahead, get the ported 
heads at the same time. GPI offers an option to pre-assemble your heads with the new valve springs. So these are the Brian Tooley uh, racing valve springs and these came pre-assembled. It's only 75 bucks for them to install these ahead of time. And just for that added peace of mind of knowing it's taken care of, I went ahead and did that. It's a little bit less work that you'll need to do when putting the vehicle together. Now, when you pull off your heads, you do need to replace the bolts since the OEM bolts are single use only. GPI does offer the option for going with OEM bolts again, or you can go with the upgraded ARP bolts. I definitely feel like this is a worthwhile upgrade. Um, if you want to even go to the next level, you can get ARP studs, which are definitely an upgrade over bolts, even more so than I realized. I did a little bit of research and there's a really good video I'm gonna link in the description that explains the superiority of studs over bolts. However, if you're just putting your motor back together and wanna leave it and just let it run, bolts are definitely good enough. Inside the oil valley tray, you're gonna be installing these oil block offs and these are definitely an important component of the AFM delete. So they're gonna install these inside that tray and we'll be showing you guys how to do that. There's a new lash that goes on the high pressure fuel pump. There's a new cam bolt. You're also going to want to replace the hardened fuel lines. There are two lines. I'm still waiting for the other one to come in from the dealer. So this is one of the two hardened fuel lines. These, just like the bolts, are single use only. So when you pull out your old ones, you definitely want to go ahead and replace them. You could be tempted to reuse them, but they're not that expensive, especially when you're doing all of this. It's smarter just to follow the instructions with this and replace your hardened fuel lines. Now GPI recommends installing this phaser limiter and they have a great write up explaining why this is necessary. I'm gonna link into the, I'm gonna to link to that article in the description of this video rather than boring you with the full technical gory details. So definitely check that out. Do your research as with any of this stuff so you understand what you're doing um, when you go ahead to upgrade your truck. Now one part that is missing here is the crank seal and as I mentioned GPI is going to be overnighting that to me so I should have it by tomorrow. Now one other thing that I highly recommend you upgrade while you're in working on your motor are your trunnions. So this is not part of the DOD delete but it is something that can fail um, although not as common. So these trunnions allow you to basically have locking rings on both ends whereas the OEM ones do not so that these can actually uh, have the collar slip off, whereas these are locked, so you don't ever have to worry about that happening. Now, GPI has several trunnion kits that you can choose from. The ones I went with were the CHE kit. You're also gonna wanna replace the water pump gaskets. I don't have those here. I'm picking those up from my dealer tomorrow, so be aware that you are gonna need those as well. Now, I also purchased some additional hardware, obviously, on either ends that I decided to upgrade at the same time. What I'm gonna do for this video series is install the heads, the cam, and all the DOD delete, re-dyno the truck, and we're gonna see how much power it makes, and then we're gonna go ahead and upgrade to the 6.2 liter intake manifold throttle body, as well as an aftermarket air raid intake, and we're gonna see how much performance that adds to the truck on top of this initial upgrade. For all of the performance enhancing parts, I'll include the estimates that GPI gives for the horsepower and torque gains for each one down in the description. We are going to do dyno runs, so we'll see what those horsepower and torque gains to uh, correlate to on my truck. Now with the 6.2 manifold, GPI does sell this. They also sell a ported version, um, which will make a little bit more horsepower. They also sell a ported uh, throttle body. I decided just to go with the OEM manifold and throttle body. I picked those up used off of eBay. Um, however, if you want to go all the way, definitely recommend getting those ported to get that little bit of extra horsepower. It's up to you, the cost uh, versus horsepower gains. And I went with an air raid air intake. Now, for a lot of intakes, you know, it's very questionable how much more power you make. I did talk to GPI and they said that after installing this, they did it before and after diner run and they definitely had a performance improvement. So I'm excited to see what this will do with the truck. Um, I am a dealer, as I mentioned, the company I work for is a dealer for this, so I was able to get this a little bit cheaper. If you're paying full price, it's up to you whether you think that horsepower gain is worth the extra cost. But as I said, we are gonna dyno the manifold and air box separately from the cam and head upgrade, so you should get a rough idea of how much these will actually give your vehicle. So that's a very quick overview of the parts I selected for my build. Um, if you're looking for something more performance oriented, you might want to swap a few of these parts with some different options, but GPI is a great resource for going over all of those particulars with you. If you end up going through GPI, definitely tell them that you watch this video. That helps us out, so we appreciate that. 
I didn't break down all of these parts into their nitty gritty details because GPI does a great job of doing that. And honestly, we would, this would be an hour long video and I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to give you a quick overview so that you could be a little more educated about the parts that you might want to use when building your truck. If you guys have any comments or questions, please leave them below. We really do uh, our best to get back to all of your comments and questions. So we appreciate the engagement. In the next part of this process, we're going to start pulling the truck apart. So stay tuned for part three. We may be pulling the motor. We might decide to do it in the truck. I think we're leaning towards pulling the motor. So most likely the next part of this process will be pulling the motor out. And then the fourth video will be disassembling the motor in preparation of installing all these new parts. So stay tuned for part three. Thank you guys for watching. If you aren't subscribed already, it really helps us out if you hit that subscribe and like button. We want to keep bringing videos like this to you that are helpful and detailed so that you guys can work on your vehicles. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you back here for part three.